Thank you. So anyway, I hope you had a good time. Everyone had a good time here? So here we are. Hi folks, my name. Very good, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, for the entire month of May in the five boroughs of New York City and Long Island, there's a Marx Brothers event going on virtually any night, almost any night in May. MarxFest.com for all the information. Including tomorrow night, you will be joining us for a conversation with Dick Cavett and Robert S. Bader about the Marx Brothers television appearances uh, at the Players Theater on McDougal Street. Uh, so, before we get to my questions, I've been asked to uh, begin with a very important question. Yes, yes. From the audience, yes. why were you flirting with Grandma Toby? <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote that question? <laughs> was that the granddaughter? I, 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 I swear it wasn't not. me. Well, was it you? I, I, you have to see Grandma Toby. Grandma Toby is very cute. She's got a great smile and beautiful eyes. And she was laughing at the jokes. That's all it takes. So. <laughs> Thank you, Grandma Toby. Very Thank much. you. You can come to the front row of my shows anytime. I've been here for the next three years. I'm up here, I can see what you think. Yes, it's lovely. Uh, well, why don't we do a few more audience questions okay. then, before we get to my stuff? All right. Because uh, <laughs> questions from the audience are always. And I have not seen these, they're on the screen. They may be very inappropriate. Good, I hope so. <laughs> what was Groucho's relationship with his contemporaries, like W.C. Fields, Charlie Kaplan, Edgar Bergen, etc.? Uh, as I mentioned in the show, he, uh, I guess that these are written at intermission, he, uh, Chaplin was his favorite comedian. And, 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 and Groucho was very, uh, you know, all these guys were competitive. But, you know, Chaplin is the reason comedians were able to work in film. He, he, he really opened the door for all comedians that followed. And he just, he, they were so different in style, Groucho and Chaplin. Groucho just found him to be a god of what he did. And they were they were friends and friendly, and they knew each other even through up until their 80s. Uh, they died the same year, 1977. Groucho was just short of his 87th birthday, and Chaplin, I think, was 88. And something near, near I think, was it roughly? 80, yeah, I got that. 87 or 88 years old. I think it was 87. Yeah, but they, they had mutual respect for each other. Chaplin once said to Groucho, I wish I could talk on the screen the way you do. And Groucho, it, it, it marveled his mind. Here he goes, here the greatest comedian of all time is telling me he wishes he could speak like me. That's, so yes, he loved Red Skelton. He was a real uh, advocate of Red Skelton. Uh, he liked W.C. Fields, but I think there was a bit of, um, I think there was probably a little bit of a rivalry there. I thought there might have been a little, I don't know for your research, there seemed to be a little bit. And these guys were contemporaries and competitive, but uh, I think there was mutual respect. Uh, the Groucho and Fields were playing the same game to a degree that Groucho and Chaplin weren't. Mm -hmm. You know, they were both renegade anarchist comics. Yes, and exactly. pretension. Yeah, they were very, they were more similar in style. But, uh, that's a, but, but you know, what, the great thing about Groucho, which I don't necessarily address in the show, was his loyalty to uh, to his friends. He kept he kept friendships for fifty years, sixty years, all his life. The guys who wrote Harry Ruby wrote the the lyrics to these songs. Ray for Kevin Spaulding. He was friends with these guys and his writers forever. And he also was great at, and Dick Cavett is, is, is one of those people, at promoting young talent. Steve Allen, Jack Lemon. There's a long list of people that he promoted. Neil Simon, I just watched it, you know, it was Neil, Grouch, Neil Simon actually admits that Groucho and Oak Howard saved Come Blow Your Horn by saying that the reviews were mixed and the reaction was not that great, but Groucho said to the press, go see Neil Simon's first play and it sold tickets. That's what Groucho would do. His, his words were very valuable. His influence was valuable. And there's a story about Walter Matthau uh, when he was playing in the Odd Couple on Broadway, where he played also Oscar in the Odd Couple. Did Matthau's wife say to him after the opening night something to the effect of not quite so much Groucho Marx? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. He was, everyone wanted to imitate Groucho, and, and Neil Simon wrote to that, lilt, often. Absolutely. But great, great question. But the Groucho, Groucho had a great respect for it. You know, it's a, it's, it's a battle to stay in the game. He loved Jack Benny. I mean, everyone loved Jack Benny. The Groucho, they were all polar opposites and stuff, of course. Yeah, there's a wonderful YouTube clip you can find of Groucho's guest appearance on Benny's show. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to talk about the first time I saw an evening with Groucho. I was familiar with your work. I'd seen you in Animal Crackers in 1992. Right. And I'd seen a life in review, as I'm sure many of you have, on PBS. The first time I saw an evening of Groucho, and the show began, and you came up on stage as Frank Ferrante. 
And it was a sort of curveball at the top of the show, and a wonderful way of getting into it. Um, and I just wonder if you might expand a little bit on what you say at the beginning of this show. Uh, introduce us to the nine-year-old Frank Ferrante. Tell us in love with the Marx Brothers. Well, I wanted to start off as myself because I wanted to give it a, you know, I wanted to show folks that I wasn't just a guy up there with grease paint running around because a lot of people think anyone can do it. And I, I have loved him since I was a boy. And for a lot of young guys my age now, I'm, I'm 50 now, but when I was 9, 10, 11, 12, in the 1970s, there were a lot of guys my age during the Vietnam era that loved Groucho. And Groucho was alive, he was an old man, and, and You Bet Your Life was in reruns, and the movies were on television, and Groucho was making appearances on talk shows, if you remember him in his parade. And he was an author ego for a lot of the shy kids. He was saying things you should never say, he was doing things you should never do. And it was exhilarating, and I was taught by nuns, and I, want, I think I wanted to treat the nuns the way Groucho treated Margaret Dumont. Uh, and, and, and you know, it was, he, was, he, was a, he was really a, he was a suit of armor for so many of us. And it, sometimes I do these shows, and what we really do, we get all ages, I get all ages of these shows, I do about 40 of these a year. And there was a guy my age that came up to me at the end of the show and says to me, you're the guy. I said, what do you mean? You're the guy. So we all wanted to be Groucho growing up. You got to be Groucho. And he knew exactly what he meant. Because Groucho, you know, when Groucho, when Groucho died, he was dying for a long time. He had strokes and, and he died over the summer of 1977. And every day the papers report on his condition. Groucho Marx breaks his hip. Groucho Marx takes a turn for the worse. Groucho Marx's condition, you know, improving. And we all were watching. And he passed away. It was headline news, and thick block letters, Groucho dies, and all the papers. And I remember going, everyone goes, did you hear Groucho die? Did you hear Groucho die? I said, yeah, I heard Groucho die. And I tried to kind of act as if it wasn't a big deal. And that night I went to bed, put the pillow over my head, and I started crying. I felt like I lost a grandfather, because he meant that much to me. And years later, I, I, bump, I would bump into adult friends, performers, and I'd say, I'd tell them that story. And, 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 Inevitably, some would say to me, oh yeah, I cried when Groucho died. There was a, a, a well-known opera singer who was 10 years old and Groucho died, oh yeah, I cried. We all loved him. And that's because he was a great artist and he really affected us. He affected me. There's something special about certain talent in the world that comes our way. And Groucho somehow struck a chord. I mean, so honest and irreverent. We don't get to behave. The way I behave up here, one of my joys is, is <laughs> that child. Is that, that this child within gets to share with You'll never forget tonight, will you? Yeah. <laughs> and so many young people love this type of thing. And, and, and uh, it's, you know, it's very direct, this kind of comedy. And, and it's, it's, he's childlike in a way, and adolescent and honest and free. And I think that's very exciting. And it appealed to me when I was a self-conscious uh, pre-teen teenager. Yeah, that's so, you once, you once said, sir, I wrote it down because it was so well put. This is in your introduction to Coffee with Groucho. Groucho Marx is an alter ego for all of us hapless souls taught to play by the rules unconditionally. And that is the appeal, isn't yeah. it? It has something to do with being the cheeky kid. Yeah. Um, and uh, not perhaps the class clown, but, but the witty clown. Uh, let's go to a few more audience questions. Are you still with us, folks? <laughs> How many lives did you have? Groucho or me? <laughs> can, we, can we get this clarified? Four all together between me and Groucho. <laughs> you can do the math. You can, and can. Now, Groucho had three wives. Uh, he was married to Ruth for 22 years, and they had two children, Arthur Marks, who uh, passed away two, about three years ago, who was one of my best friends. He was 89 when he passed away. And there wasn't a week that went by when we didn't speak, and I, when I was home, I'd see him at least once a week. And he was like a father to me, and uh, he referred to me as his best friend. I, I loved Arthur. Uh, we had a very special connection. Mm. And it's a very unusual thing to play the father uh, of someone like this. You know, that I played his father. He directed me and wrote this play, and it was, it was an odd thing. His, his relationship with his father was very complicated. It was love a hate relationship, often. And he wouldn't say that publicly, but you got that by reading his work. And I just loved Groucho because I was a fan. And so we had this strange kind of relationship where we hit the hell out of you. We had to know. That's what Arthur would have said. Um, we'll wait for the movie. I'm not taking my clothes off. I 
and die in your pants or don't go. <laughs> There's no keeping those people. There's nothing you can do. That's not gonna work. So anyway, and Miriam, Groucho's daughter, Miriam, is going to be 87 this month. And I, I talk to her every couple of days, and I visit her once a week. And, uh, and then he had another wife. So after that first marriage ended, Groucho kind of, they say kind of gave up. Because he loved being a family man, though he wasn't a great husband by his own admission. But he loved the idea of family and raising kids. And his first wife, Ruth, was an alcoholic. And so he did all the grocery shopping and the you know, cleaning and driving his kids to school. And he could be quite caustic over the dinner table when his wife, Ruth, was drinking and he was upset. And the kids witnessed a lot of that. And that was difficult for those two children. After that, Groucho started marrying younger women. And women that were, weren't really a particular challenge to him, which is what he hated. And um, he was from a different time and a different school of, uh, of, a, of a relationship. He married a woman named Kay, who was in the early 20s, and he was in his 50s. And then after that, they divorced for a few years, and he married a woman named Eden, and she was in her 20s, and he was in his 60s. And he never really found that, that relationship in his life. Uh, he had a very domineering mother and probably had some issues uh, with, with women uh, that started early on. Uh, Groucho's daughter, Groucho's mom, many referred to him in German as the, as the jealous one, as the dark one. And uh, it made him feel like he was not the favorite. And uh, it, it stayed with him and he talked about it when he was an older man. Uh, this is a question from uh, the lookalike in the first row. I look like in the front row. This is also... Hi, <laughs> Aiden. This actually suggests that Aiden may have a future in show business. All right. This is a question just designed for promotion. Mm -hmm. Frank, do you have any social media accounts? Funny you should ask, Aiden. <laughs> uh, yes, on the eveningwithgroucho.com. You can see all the shows. Tomorrow I'm going to be in Staten Island. At 3 p.m. for Matt May. We'll see you there, Aiden. I can use another brush up here. <laughs> and yeah, and also, if you can like the show on Facebook, uh, eat an evening with Crouch. So I don't know if you do any of that, but you can follow what I'm doing. And I put funny things on there once in a while. So thank you for asking. Uh, an evening with Crouch is quite active on Facebook, and you should, you should all like it, having just liked it. <laughs> thank you. Are any of you on Facebook here? Yeah. If any of you saw faces, is it easy to get on um, so, the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles in 1976, you, so, you see Groucho right. in real life for the first time. You are standing at the top of a metal staircase, yes. and you call down to him two words. Yes. Groucho's great. Yes. And in a sense, you've been repeating those words ever since. Right. Uh, so tell me, seeing Groucho in the flesh, at that point you had, you had played Groucho a little bit as a child. And all the way. Uh, it was an album that I was how do you feel inside to see the man in the flesh? It was life changing. I was I was a 13 year old boy, and there was Groucho Marx, my hero. It was like seeing a, a superhero for me. You know, to me it's like this was he was a god to me. He was he was beyond. And I'd see these movies. To me, he was a, he was a hero, truly a hero. But he could barely move, as I talk about. And so it was very jarring to see his weakened condition. His eyes were glassy. He was shuffling. And it looked like he wasn't going to make it through this appearance, promoting a book in Los Angeles. My father had taken the day off of work to take me to see Groucho, which I really appreciated. My father, who, who, who in a way, I was crazier about Groucho than my own father at the time, you know. So it was really a sweet thing like that, that to encourage this fascination. And uh, but it was great. Groucho was, you know, and I told you the stories. Groucho, you know, it was. It looked like he was about to keel over. And someone asked the question, Groucho. Are you making any new Marx Brothers with me? No, I'm answering stupid questions. <laughs> and, and that's how I start the show here. And he was fantastic, you know. He, he, he came to life in front of an audience, and then after the show was done, the, 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 he kind of just oh. with, with, withdrew again and shuffled off. And he goes down these metal stairs, as Noah was saying, and I'm on the top of these, this, this where was I? I'm kind of the top of these stairs, look, the metal stairs looking down, and I yelled out the top of my lungs, Groucho's great! And he looked up and kind of waved. Um, and then I saw him drive off into the sunset. And ten years, ten years after that, to that month, I was playing Groucho at age 885 in New York when I was 23. Can you imagine? Well, you know, and, 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 
something, I remember saying to my cousin Ralph, and Groucho had his beret on and he was going into his car, and I said, Ralph, Ralph, take a picture of Groucho from behind. Let's get him in silhouette. What 13-year-old thinks this way? But it, it looked very poignant. Mm -hmm. And the end of Groucho Life in Review, I turned my back, I'm in my beret, I'm in silhouette, and I said, I must be going, and we black out the Groucho. So there was, that's my life at that moment. Uh, there's a beautiful book called Groucho, A Photographic Journey, of which Frank is the editor. And it mostly consists of photographs taken by Arthur, right? From Arthur's private collection. There are pictures of Groucho and the Marx Brothers in that book that you can't find anywhere else. And uh, Frank edited it and wrote the introduction. And that photograph of Groucho, I, I suppose taken from the top of those stairs? Yeah, yeah. The picture of Groucho waving at Frank is in this book. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely worth looking for. A photographic journey. Yes. Uh, let's do a couple more from our sure. first audience. Thank you for staying so long, by the way. Appreciate it. Uh, no problem. Uh, now, this question is annotated. The note says that this question is, was in the Sunday Times crossword puzzle this week. Marx Brothers turn up in the uh, Times yeah. puzzle fairly often, don't they? What was the name of Groucho's car? Groucho's the, the DeSoto? It must be a DeSoto. Yeah. Was it a DeSoto? I, I suppose the name of, I suppose that's what the clue must have been in the crossword. Uh, or a Studebaker. Or a Studebaker, yes. Yeah, a Studebaker, and I guess it was a, was a Frenchman in Soloto? Yes, in Philadelphia. He had a heavy accent, he got called it Studebaker. <laughs> <laughs> DeSoto. DeSoto. DeSoto was a sponsor. What the car sponsor was. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's right. When it, when you, buy a pro when, I, when you buy a sponsor's product, right? so when you buy a DeSoto, tell them Groucho sent you. Right? I mean, I think it was DeSoto as well. Yeah, right, absolutely. And I would expect the crossword would be DeSoto and not Studebaker. <laughs> <laughs> Very likely. Uh, well, this is something that you have touched on in the show tonight, but it's a good place to end because, because it's about love. Uh -huh. uh, and I know there's so much to say on this subject, but uh, that you must have more. Uh, Talk about the relationship between Groucho and Margaret Dumont. Why was she special and why were they special? Have, you, have any of you seen the movies with, with Dumont and Groucho and so? <laughs> she, she's, mag she's magnificent. She's a perfect uh, complement to his brashness. Mm -hmm. And she takes it. And all these insults she sees almost as lovemaking. <laughs> and and, and she's, a, she's wonderful with him and she plays it straight. I think she, she's not she's not a caricature. You believe her, and you get the idea that she really loves him, and that they had a great camaraderie off stage as well. She was eight years older than Groucho, and um, you no, know, they would they would they would torment her on the road. Can you imagine being on the road and trains, <laughs> trapped in a train with the four Marx Brothers and, and Margaret Dumont? I mean, the pranks that went on. They would steal, they would steal her wig. You know, they, all those things, it was, it was, they would, you know, they would strip her down. There's all kinds of things, the abuse that she took. But she, deep down, she loved it because they were, they loved her. You know, they were, they were in show business together, and they were creating funny, funny, original work. And that's exhilarating when people are laughing. She would say, Julius, what are they, what are they laughing at? But he, often because you had three guys, four guys behind you, raising hell, and she, how can you keep track of all the shenanigans? I, mean, I think she had to understand the actual humor, the joke she got, I believe. But there was, can you imagine this, the, the, the whirlwind that surrounded Margaret Dumont? Her last appearance, and so she worked with the Marx Brothers on Broadway, 25, 26, 27, 1928, and Animal Coconuts, Animal Crackers, that made movies with them up and through the early 40s. Her last appearance was with Groucho in 1965. She was 83 years old. She told everyone she was 75, Groucho's age, and they recreated her rape for Captain Spaulding, the Captain Spaulding entrance, and she was there. She died a few days later after the broadcast. Oh, wow. But how, how fitting that this was her final appearance, and that you can find on YouTube as well. And she played straight woman to like W.C. Fields and uh, Martin, I think Jerry Lewis as well, many others, and uh, But I think uh, their selection was special. And, and, uh, we know performers, we all have an affinity for each other because we know what the world is like, and it's an odd struggle to stay employed. And, uh, you know, we're in the trenches together, but they love each other. And uh, I love doing Show Me Rose. That's one of my favorite sections of the show. Uh, I don't hope you like it, the part with Dumont and, and you know, Groucho. Together.
with all those one-liners. He was brutal. I love that joke. I can see it right now in the kitchen bending over a hot stove. I can't see the stove. It doesn't make it funnier or meaner than that. She looks at what? What did he say? What did he really say? It doesn't get any funnier, and somehow it doesn't get any less funny. No, it's not. How many times have you heard that joke? Hundreds. And you're sincerely laughing. Yeah, right? we are all sincerely laughing. Over good, good. And that's why, uh, you know, we can't thank you enough for being here. We can't thank you enough thank for you. keeping Groucho alive. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all.